Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. The Linux kernel exposes a very large and very broad API out to application land. And this API consists not just of the system calls themselves, but also files like slash sys and slash proc, as well as the C library functions, which in turn go on to call the system calls. The paper I'm looking at today examines the usage profile of that API. Which ones are used the most frequently, which ones are used infrequently, which ones are not used at all. Why would you even want to do this? First of all, it's useful information to have in and of itself. But there are a couple of other practical reasons. The first one is that it can help kernel developers and system developers figure out how their changes affect backwards compatibility, how they can deprecate old or unused APIs. And the second practical reason is that many experimental systems or research systems often have to add a Linux compatibility layer in order to run common applications or benchmarks. And when you do that, you only want to implement the most important or the most commonly used system calls as opposed to all of them. The data that the authors use is from application usage statistics and installation statistics taken from Ubuntu and Debian. This paper is from back in 2016, so the kernel version they're looking at is 3.19. And based on this data, the authors define two new metrics. The first one is API importance, which which measures the probability that an installation of a system includes an application that requires a given API. So this takes into account how popular an application is, how commonly it's installed. The second metric is what they call weighted completeness, which looks at the fraction of applications supported by a given subset of the Linux API. And this again is weighted by the popularity of those applications. Now, how do they determine which applications use which system call? And the way they do that is to use static binary analysis. So they analyze each binary statically and extract all the system calls, all the C library calls, as well as the pseudo file system reads that a binary is doing. So what did the authors find? This graph summarizes their findings. As of kernel 3.19, Linux had 320 system calls. I believe currently as of kernel 5, the number is closer to 400. And this graph shows that out of those 320 system calls, if you just look at the ones whose API importance is more than 10%, you will need about 257 of those system calls. To break it down in a bit more detail, over two thirds of the system calls are very important. They are required by at least one application on every installation. Of the remaining, about 33 are important on only more than 10% of the installation. And that leaves about 44 system calls with very low API importance. This means that less than 10% of the installations have at least one application that uses these system calls. But surprisingly, they found that 18 out of the 320 system calls were not used by a single application in Ubuntu or Debian. Another really interesting analysis that the authors did was look at subsets of the syscall interface to see which subsets you need for what levels of functionality. If you were to write a Linux compatibility layer, which system calls would you have to implement to get the most bang for your effort? And what they found was that you need a core set of about 40 system calls for even the simplest application. And then you can support more and more applications until you get to about 125 system calls. And this level of compatibility drops off after about 202 system calls. This graph expresses the same numbers. So you need about 145 sys calls to hit a 50% weighted completeness ratio and about 202 to hit about a 90% weighted completeness ratio. Now there are a few kitchen sink system calls, notably iOctal, 
which even though they are one system call, hide a massive range of functionality behind them. For example, iOctal has about 635 opcodes, which express various different kinds of functionality. But as this graph shows, you only need a fraction of those hundreds of opcodes to hit the most important API usage point. Now, so far we've been looking at API importance in terms of weighing it by how popular the applications using it are. But you could also look at unweighted API importance, which looks at the probability of the usage of that API irrespective of the probability of its installation, or in other words, irrespective of how popular that app is. And when you do that, you see an even more skewed picture in that you only need about 130 system calls to hit a 10% API importance lower bound. So this 130 is about half of the about 260 system calls that you needed for a similar threshold when you looked at the weighted API importance metric. So that was a quick look at a paper which tries to quantify the importance of the very large and broad surface area that the Linux kernel exposes to user land. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you all next time. Thank you very much.